created by Sanjay Leela Bhansali, Hira Mandi, The Diamond Bazaar, starring Manisha Koirala, Sonakshi Sinha, Aditi Rao Hadri, Richard Chadda, Sanjida Sheikh and Sharmin Sega in the lead roles, is about to be released on Netflix pretty soon. As the historical drama is about to release soon, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you the historical backdrop of that particular place in detail so that you can have the best viewing experience. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. Hiramandi, which translates to Diamond Market in Urdu, is a district and bazaar in the walled city of Lahore. According to a Wikipedia article, it is particularly known as the Red Light District of Lahore, Pakistan. It is believed that it was originally called Hira Singh Di Mandi, meaning Hira Singh's food grain market. Later, it became the modern name Hiramandi. It is located in the walled city of Lahore near the Taksali Gate and south of Badshahi Mosque. Hiramandi was a singing and dancing community based on the Tawaif culture or the Kurdistan culture during the Mughal period. After British colonization, Hiramandi gradually transformed into a red light district mainly devoted to prostitution. Hira Singh Dugra, chief minister of Punjab during the reign of Shere Punjab Ranjit Singh, thought that the Shahi Mohalla in the heart of the city could be used as an economic center similar to a bazaar in addition to housing the Tawaifs. He established a green market in the vicinity which initially became known as Hira Singh Dimandi. Hira means diamond in Udu and is said to describe the dancers of the area. But in reality, the name of the area is traditionally attributed to Hira Singh, son of Dhyan Singh Dogra. Dhyan Singh was the Prime Minister during the reign of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Founded by the Mughals, women were brought to the Hira Mandi for entertainment during the Mughal period, mainly from Afghanistan and Uzbekistan. An area south of the Lahore fort was developed as a residential quarter for servants and retainers of the royal court and the emperor. As it was close to the fort, it was called the Shahi Mohalla or royal quarter. The region became the residence of the Tawaib's professional artists of the royal court. The market was originally the center of the city's courtesan culture for the Mughal elite of Lahore in the 15th and 16th. 16th centuries. During the Mughal period, the Tawaibs of Hiramandi were trained in Indian classical music, Kathak and Mujra dance, as well as poetry and etiquette. These Tawaib have art teachers or Ustad who guide them in their skills. They like to practice music and danced on the balcony of the Kota. These Tawaibs entertain guests with beautiful Kota artwork and offered performing arts to their guests. Some Tawaibs also entered the palace to perform for the Mughal royal family. The nobles sent their son to the Tawaib house to learn worldly etiquette and manners. Maharaja Ranjit Singh restored several Mughal royal rituals in Lahore, including the Tawaif culture and during their court appearances, the Tawaifs continued to receive royal patronage from the court. According to a Daily O article, the culture of the Tawaifs was revived by Ranjit Singh but could never match the splendor with which the Mughals honored the region. History also tells us that Maharaja Ranjit Singh also fell in love with a Tawaif which was met with resistance from his people as the woman belonged to the Kanjar caste. Ranjit Singh paid no attention to this criticism and subsequently married the woman and built a separate haveli or mansion for her. However, British colonial rule strengthened Hiramandi's reputation as a center of prostitution. At the market, women and Khwajasara, the transgender people, performed traditional and classical dances. From the British colonial period until recent years, it remained a center of prostitution in Lahore. Many hijras frequented the area and are still involved in the region's dance culture. After British colonization, although there were more brothels and prostitutes in Hiramandi, there were still Tawaif performances in the area and Hiramandi retained its reputation as a performing arts center. Tawaif's patrons were no longer emperors and nobles but wealthy men from the city. Hiramandi was nicknamed bazar e husnu or beauty market. After partition, Hiramandi's young and attractive Tawaifs became the first choice of Pakistani filmmakers. Hiramandi girls joined the Lollywood industry and gained a lot of fame and fortune. Some of the most talented Tawaifs appeared as background dancers in early Pakistani films. There were many dance and music classrooms in and around Hiramandi which were closed when the Tawaifs and musicians left. Subsequently, many prostitutes came to Hiramandi to engage in prostitution. The place is also considered a symbol for the city of Lahore during the Mughal period. Over time during the day, Hiramandi is much like any other Pakistani bazaar and is known for its good food, a wide range of Khusa traditional Mughal footwear and musical and dance instrument shops. Brothels open above the shops at night. Sometimes the very words Hiramandi are considered offensive and informal 
internal discourse. During the reign of Muhammad Zia Wal Haq, an operation was conducted against music and dance houses believed to be dens of prostitution. After prostitution was banned in Hiramandi, much of the area was transformed into food streets, restaurants, and shops. Lately, there are prostitutes in the area who sell sex secretly. However, the practice is declining in the area with increase in backup prostitutes on the internet, although it is still illegal. The idea to make Hiramandi a story about the courtesan of Lahore's Hiramandi region was given to the director Sanjay Leela Bhansali by writer Moin Beg almost 14 years ago. However, Bhansali couldn't do the film at that time because he was busy with Deep Das. After that, Bhansali got busy with Sawadia, Guzares, and then Bajirao Mastani, and the script of Hiramandi could not see the light of day. At one point, writer Moin Beg even asked for his script back because Bhansali wasn't doing anything with it. But as luck would have it, Beg and Bhansali never knew that the iconic story of Pakistan's most popular street could be made into a Netflix series. According to Bhansali, when he and Beg told the story to Netflix, they were in turmoil. Ultimately, Hiramandi deserved a series of 8 to 9 episodes to tell the world the story of the Tawaifs or courtesans of Lahore whose plight collapsed under the British Raj and remains there even today. Hey, 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 thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your expectations regarding Hiramandi. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off. Khuda Hafiz and I'll be back.